Welcome, Traveler. You have entered the realm of adventure. Prepare yourself for tales from Beyond the Dice. Beyond the Dice is a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition actual play podcast set in a cyberpunk city called New Etika. I am your dungeon master, Luke, and your players are... Ben, I play Cortain, a now level 5 human fighter. Jeff, I play Gage, a level 5 human wizard. Peter, I'm playing Speaks, the level 5 dwarf artificer. C, level 5. <laughs> I'm Travis, I am Little Moss, and I am a level 5 half-orc monk. And Travis, you should be saying, hi, I'm Travis, and I'm back! What he said. <laughs> yeah, like, why, why are you level 5? You, you, didn't, you didn't have some sweet fights. Let me flavor it, bitch! <laughs> Let me uh, shake some, some chicken salt over my level up here. That's what Travis is basically saying. Because um, we know that chips without chicken salt don't have any flavor. I'm like that meme where the guy sprinkles salt. On oh, the salt, salt bay. <laughs> Spicy. All right, uh, so what our listeners may have noticed is everyone went from level 4 to level 5. Holy shit, did we see that coming? Hopefully. Um, now, what we're going to do is we will talk about some of our level ups and we'll do some role play and that sort of thing around some certain things that might come up in this episode. One of the things that... One of the things we're going to discuss today is... Uh, shopping. Uh, our characters will have yeah. some time to purchase some things as they're leveled up to five. I think it's time for them to get some some better gear, uh, some some nice loot that we had sort of been saving them. Well, I had been saving them. I say we like there's more than me behind the DM screen, but it's not. I'm really lonely back here. <laughs> Please, guys. <laughs> no, okay. Um, so we're going to go into a small scene that um, you may all recognize as being taking place not being, but taking place immediately after last episode but before I do that I will get all of these boys these RPG boys my spicy, creamy nerdy white boys to roll, besides Travis you don't get to do it, uh, to roll a d20 I wasn't going to and recount the tale last episode Cortain got a 15 unless someone else got a 1 no G- gauge 5 oh dang it 2 <laughs> speaks. alright so Peter what happened previously well, last time we were, uh, we were in the tunnels on the ground, preparing to like take on some some of those skull, those red skull capped guys, boneheads. Boneheads. That was it. And we instead intimidated them to like. Oh no, sorry. First we met the mega bugbear who was like, "Hey, you can fight me, but like after you fight those guys, I'm like, oh, that's cool." And so, and then we intimidated the the uh, skull capped guys, who then ran upstairs, while we finished off the bugbear, or attempted to. Uh, there was a whole heap of hostages there, and we could have probably released them, which would have helped so badly the entire episode. Yeah, probably but they were idiots. The one was who like grabbed, <laughs> no, grabbed all of them, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is my recap, Jeff. You didn't roll low enough. You didn't get a recap. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. I'm hunting for inspiration. It's all they're, they're <laughs> all really smart, the perfect hostages. They they would have helped out if only Jeff had undid their binds. But no, he did one, but he gave gave him a sword and he ran away upstairs and died. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Jeff was upset that he uh, might have lost the katana in the process. Um, no, he dropped it. He dropped no, it. no, he dropped it off a cliff. <laughs> Do <laughs> the vacuum of space. At least he didn't lose Cortana, which is um, Ben's female character that he only brings out on weekends. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say 
Well, I did lose Cortana if Cortana was my, my right hand and Cortane's only girlfriend. Oh, oh wow. that's cool. Oh. <laughs> Mate, what you do every night of the week is your business. <laughs> we, we fought the bugbear and uh, for Trav's sake and for our listeners to remember, he uh, Cortane threw a grenade terribly and exploded. And I'm pretty sure the uh, repercussions of the grenade took off his hand. Aka why the the hand joke. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. That's incent. You don't even know my pain, man. <laughs> Is it like a phantom hand now? Do you have to actually cast mage hand just to? <laughs> no, I've got a left hand for that. It's just oh. not as good. No, it's never as good. It's alright. It doesn't have. A, it doesn't have quite the same. Grip. It'll improve with time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much everyone went down at one point. Spigs was unconscious at one point. I'm pretty sure Gage was unconscious at one point. This isn't ergonomic at all. Then Spigs got back up. <laughs> we kicked off the bugbear off the edge of the of of, of, of the was the tram line, the train. Yeah, line? it was off the off the uh, platform onto the train lines. Yeah, and like murdered him. He died epically, and now we go and fetch a katana. But how did he dies? How did he dies? And how many of you fell Ooh. in battle? Oh, I, I know, sir. I know. All right. You, sir, in the back. Well, well, the mecha bugbear was slew, was slew by the most heroic of men. A person that all women wish to be with and all men wish to be. You're right here. Spigs. Spigs. <laughs> Severus <laughs> so, you? Snape. Shut up, Spigs. It was <laughs> Cortain. Brilliant Cortain. And what did he do? <laughs> uh, he... Oh, man, what did he... You cl- you cleft off of his head. Yeah, yeah. And cut as, his head off. as the uh, bugbear was, it. yeah, as yes. he was saying some final words to you, you crushed his head with your big steel boot. Yeah. And that's where we're going to start up this next episode. Subway station, Delta XIV. Tents, folding <laughs> tables, and chairs are set out in the central platform around the small shops. Plastic and wooden crates are scattered about, lanterns sitting on them, old cups of coffee. And we hear the sound of some small white tiles that have been disturbed from their resting place. They're falling clattering to the ground from the stray gunfire from the battle that just ensued the dull lights warm this cold chamber we see Cortain scraping the blood brains and motor oil off his boot on the wreckage of Mecha Bugbear one of the Aegis medics attending to his hand or rather the place where his hand once was we see Spigs panting reloading his thunder cannon, wiping the sweat off of his brow. Gage, checking over the hostages. Mm -hmm. He's down. He's down. No, no, no. You got better? Yeah. Gage. I got better. (laughs) I was only unconscious. (laughs) Gage, checking over over the hostages as one of them had used a stim pack on him, driving him back to life. And his first thought was to check these stupid people. The people that got caught and the people that didn't quite help when they were supposed to. We see Paige Longleaf, one of the survivors from the attack on Terry's diner all those months ago. She looks over the corpse of the one who took her love. She looks over the corpse of the bugbear and she remembers Nathaniel. She fiddles with her revolver, slowly clicking in another cartridge into the bullet cylinder she tucks it away the back of her pants Sisk the old Aegis uh, leader passes Cortain's shotgun back to him and he says she's a good gun Cortain I'm sorry you had to lose your hand like that was that was that for me to interject you could just coolly look the other direction (laughs) 
I coolly look in the other yeah, direction. Can you, like, can you flavor that next time before you just don't answer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He was like, he was giving exposition. I didn't know, like, like, do I interrupt? He just, he just had me. We, had we, me have, we trance, need, like, a man. little ding bell. Where just, like, finish expedition. Uh, I'll just go, bing bong. Nah, we, we, don't want you to <laughs> we need to, we need to set up an app that we can somehow connect to our bodies. And he just has to, like, press on our faces and it zaps us. And that's when I know it's our turn. No, no, what he needs to do is we need to have the video on in the hangout and then, like, Luke, just when he's ready, just, like, flips right. me off. <laughs> that could work. I should probably get a webcam because I could do some visual cues. Well. <laughs> yeah, would be great. Then we just presume it was our cue every time, but it turns out he was just flipping <laughs> us off. Yeah, this whole time, <laughs> so far, these 11 full minutes that we've been recording, both my fingers have been <laughs> up and pointed at the screens. <laughs> With no webcam. <laughs> yeah. Alright, Cortain, as you look away from Sisk ignoring him or just sort of asserting your dominance and your masculinity over the situation, <laughs> you notice on the ground, peeking out of the slightly bent great axe that the mecha bugbear was wielding, you see this molten hot power core glowing. And it looks like it just might fit your sword. Ooh. Wait, so is this the time for me to interject? You can. I'm <laughs> flipping you off. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I will... So that the medic's like, he's tending he's tending my hand. He's, like, I don't know, cauterized it. Cauterized the wound. But he's still, like, buzzing about, being a bit of a busybody. I kind of push him aside. Do you, do you, wait, and... do you push him with your, with your hand or your stump? No, like... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I push him with the stump. I'm like, um, I just kind of... Call. He says, oh, I'm, st- I'm stumped. Mo- stumped. Me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. Oh. He doesn't. <laughs> that, was, that was a bit yeah, underhanded. Oh, yeah. um, he, he sort of steps back, nodding to you, and uh, gives you some space. I go I go over to the... Uh, yeah, to the, to the hot power core. I knock it a bit with my foot to see if there's like burn marks on the ground because it looks quite it looks quite hot you know that uh in its when it's in its chamber the the core is fine to hold and click in it's just when the glass is broken the the energy within can scorch you okay you will get so burnt. it's got so it's got like a protective protective yeah pace. it's like a little um sort of imagine like a um like a typical pill sort of shape like a Dr. Mario pill um, that's metal capped and in the center is like a glass tube with this molten energy inside. Cool. I will pick it up and upon seeing that it is the right size for the, the for the module, like the module's the right size for the bastard sword I carry, I will put the the module in one of my like grenade or like ammo pouches nice now as you're looking over that way you see a bonehead in his red black and white mask he quickly turns and runs back up the stairs from his hiding place he had just watched the mecha bugbear get fragged by our mercs by you guys and now we see up on a small waiting room that same bonehead runs into the group of his friends, his peers, his gang. He starts to tell them something. And we all know that he's talking because he's moving his head around like like fucking Power Rangers do when they talk. <laughs> and the boneheads, that little gang that were waiting upstairs that gunned that one survivor, that one hostage down as he ran up the stairs, they take off. They run out of Delta Station, out into the busy purple streets of Dark Haven. When I say purple streets, I mean the light's all purple, not the actual street is purple. They make their way through the crowds, pushing people aside, and they disappear into the population. Now back down to the platform. That's going to cause us some trouble. We're back at the platform. You guys are all there. You sort of collect yourselves, everything that you need to, and... Sisk, with all of the others, basically say we need to leave this place just in case they come back. And so you're all leaving Delta Station. You guys escort the remainder of the hostages to another safe house location nearby. Leaving the the hostages 
and those who want to stay in the care of Danusi, the little goblin who Little Moss is friends with. Oh, yeah. And now, it's been a few days since you guys were at Delta Station, and this is where you guys level up. And what will happen is over a 10 day or two, you guys will level, you will do some shopping, uh, and we will have a little um, bit of role play from Travis and I after we talk about level up. So now we go to our level up and we will begin with the first person on the run sheet, which is Cortain. Now, Cortain, what happened, Ben? What happened when Cortain leveled to level five? So this is this is just mechanical. This is not this is not role just, play. Just mechanically, point. just a brief little overview of what you have got, uh, what you got for leveling, with any little abilities, HP or whatnot. Yep. Okay. So, uh, as as said in the start of the session of all the sessions, Cortain is a is a fighter. So. Fighters uh, are, don't don't have the most flashy level ups, but they're but they're solid and dependable. Like Cortain's old, right? <laughs> uh, so level five for for a fighter, um, my proficiency bonus increases from a two to a three. So I'll be getting uh, anything my proficiency is on rolls to hit um, skills that I'm trained in will be slightly better now, and a fighter also gets an extra attack. So when I choose to attack, instead of attacking once, I will be able to attack twice. Nice. So that means um, we- two massive swings of your bastard sword or two shots from your shotgun or a swing and a shot. Yeah, exactly. Um, basically doubles my... Could potentially double my damage. Do you think it's slightly ironic really- that you get an extra attack at the exact time that you lose a hand? <laughs> <laughs> I find nothing ironic about that. I, I, I don't know what you mean. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, is that all we want to talk about? Is uh, it a two-handed shotgun? Oh, you are you are tiptoeing on dangerous on dangerous words there. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's pretty awful fighter. Like as I said, fighters are pretty uh, pretty boring. That's why it's my uh, it's my role playing that brings Scotain to life. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> Uh, Jeff with Gage. What does he get when he hits level five? Okay, so um, Gage starts to unlock his uh, third level spells as a wizard. And, nice. Um, he's working on techno magic and starting to increase um, increase his abilities there from the uh, UA modern magic uh, from wizards. Um, something that I couldn't I couldn't not pass by was uh, good old mr lung's power from uh, alter carbon so Ooh, we now nice. gain the ability to have invisibility to cameras so f- yeah four creatures of your choice so the whole party oh, um within range time. become undetectable to so electronic bad. sensors yeah. and cameras for the <laughs> whole story arcs cameras have gotten this. you guys into a lot of freaking trouble <laughs> hey. we could actually stealth anything a target is Carrying, uh, wearing or carrying is likewise undetectable, so we don't need to go the, in the nude so no, um, no as long as slots? it's on the target's person. Um, <laughs> the, but they still remain in vision. And sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would also make your yeah uh, pizza slice invisible to cameras. So what you're saying is your new spell is basically what the pizza slice was to Spig's penis. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Made it invisible to cameras? Wait, did... Yeah, oh, did you... So you... oh, you blur it. <laughs> you blurred it, didn't you? I didn't see it, neither did I. Listen to this. <laughs> Alright, sorry, Jeff. What else did you... would you go for? That's fine. Um, also, he gained uh, protection from ballistics. Third level um, abdura- uh, abjuration. And it's concentration up to 10 minutes the spell enchants the flesh of the target against the impact of bullets until the spell ends the target has resistance to non-magical ballistic damage so he can protect himself yep. from getting shot hopefully nice. a little bit easier because you do get shot quite often hey yeah yeah quite often yeah he decided that he needed to protect himself a little bit better yep 
All right. Did you change up any other spells that you previously had or no? Um, there's one that might come up in... Oh, actually, no. 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 Cool. All right. Cool. And Peter, what did Spigs get when he hit level five? Oh, just just better in general. Uh... <laughs> oh, it's about time. <laughs> yeah. You got, uh... <laughs> you got a bib from all the drooling. So... Level 5 also increased the output damage of the Thunder Cannon. So now I get an extra, yep. like, pretty much extra D6 for level 5. Um, nice. <clears throat> do, you, do, you, do you remember back in the day when Figs first uh, made the uh, the bag of... Did you say Figs? Yeah, he did. But yeah, I like dry, yeah, dry he called him Figs. Figs. <laughs> figs. <laughs> Figs, it's Spigs, it's, evil brother. It's, it's, it's short for figures. He's full of seeds. <laughs> when it requires a wasp. Back in the day when Spigston Denser crafted the bag of holding, um, he's now been experimenting and crafted a new fabulous item. He is unsure what to call it yet, but it is... Uh, a metal uh, 60 foot long compensating <laughs> basically <laughs> yeah um, like cable it's a cable piece of pizza <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so Spinks has gone out it's of it's just because his wife doesn't want to be in the same room <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was my new stealth technique uh, but anyway um, yeah, so a sixty foot long <laughs> metal cable. Yeah, that okay. has uh, speaks with experimenting and has um, come up, created some sort of robotic sentience. So he could oh. command the cable to basically go attached to something to not on itself, um, to like pull him up. Whatever. Could it like? Could you instruct it to strangle someone? Theoretically, it can tie around something. This sounds like the beginning of a super. <laughs> yeah, nah, this is the end of the Look, world as we know it because AI takes over. Because Spigs is like my yeah. my body is like feels a bit frail, so we needed some like kind of robot arms slash cables to like you know to be able to move around and everything, and then oh, he might need about zero. eight of them, and then he'd make a cool suit. <laughs> The, this this is this is damn terrifying, yeah. Peter. Like, I'm afraid of snakes swimming up the toilet drain pipe. But now, if there's like a sentient metal pipe that can just just assassinate has me that anytime. fear ever been realised? Just out of curiosity, it, it hasn't. <laughs> only when I only when I look at like images online when there's like on Facebook or something. Man, you got some weird it's, friends uh, on Facebook. It just terrifies oh. me. Yeah. Terrifies me. You look down, you think it's a log, but. It's a snake. <laughs> That's just your um. That's just your excrement, mate. Well, sometimes my excrement is long and snake-like. It Sixty feet me. of metal cable long. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, too. sometimes. So, <laughs> so, also Spigs. I'm not sure if it's going to get to it, but he does have superior attunement. So, at fifth level, your superior understanding of magic items allows you to master their use. You can now tune up to four rather than three magic items at once. Nice. Very cool. All oh, right. Nice. And Travis, what does little Moss get when he hits level five? Uh, I also gain an extra attack and I also can spend one of my Kai points in order to attempt a stunning strike. If I do succeed on a constitution saving throw, the creature is stunned, which means they can't move or take any actions. Um, they automatically fail strength and dex saving throws and they have people that roll attack against that particular stunned creature have advantage. That's cool. So, like, you oh, can wow. stun a dude and then um, Cortain can come around with a little bit of a reach around and strangle him out. Oh, not with my right hand, though. Only with his left hand. Yeah. But to be fair, given how much time Little Moss spends standing leaning against Crate. <laughs> Crates, any attacks he does is a stunning attack. That's that's true. Like he's just stunning. Um, he'll do something. I give the crowd what the crowd wants. <laughs> <laughs> and it's less of little moss. Oh, that's true. You left for quite a while. And that's where we're going to sort of um too mean trust. Start back up. Nah, it's all good. Is 
with yeah. Travis and Little Moss. So Little Moss walks away from the battle that he had lost at the Lower Etika train station, with a train depot where all the sort of um, the freight trains and stuff run through. He walks away from there pretty battered, pretty bruised, and pretty broken. He gets a call from Gage, they exchange some words, and Little Moss tells them that he's going to go away and come back another day. And Travis, in those two weeks, so 20 days, what does Little Moss do? Where does he go? Um, Little Moss's, well, one of Little Moss's mottos is to um, live hard, train hard. And I think the training dummy that he's used for many months in his apartment is not enough. Um, So he goes out and looks for a fight. Um, He's not a bad person as such, but knows and moves in circles that give him some connections that based on his natural physical prowess and two hands um, to pretty easily get a ticket on the evening's card for some illegal pit fighting. Yes, okay, so we are back in Lower Edica in the one of the warehouses, the abandoned warehouses. There is a large octagon with caged walls, a massive crowd around them. Little Moss is in the center of the cage, or not in the center of it, but against one of the walls. And on the opposite side, another man gets in. He's a dwarf. He's got two cybernetic arms and a big mohawk, a big handlebar mustache. Um, Moss is stripped down uh, just to some kind of torn off black shorts. That's the only thing he's wearing. No shoes, no braces, no nothing. He wants yep. a bare knuckled fight. All right. We'll say that little Moss has still a couple of bruises cut on his cheek, a black eye, um, some little puncture wounds from the spikes on the displacer that he fought. And this dwarf raising its thick arms, its metallic thick arms, it looks at him and he shouts, looks at Little Moss and he shouts, Come on then! What the fuck are you waiting for, you big green piece of shit? Alright. The crowd goes crazy and they start yelling, Combo Breaker! Combo Breaker! Combo Breaker! And I just raise my arms and like, you know, where they lift, just like lift them and keep like raising them up and down to get the crowd like rolled right up. We're talking like fever pitch, blood frenzy kind of thing. Like people are like holding each other and like punching each other. Like they don't really know how to contain the excitement that I generate in the ring. Yep. And I, um, I dive at him straight away. Just a punch straight in the face. Do you want to roll a good old attack? Uh, 27. That is a hit. Oh, that was actually roll a crit. Um... Oh, that really? That was a nat 20, yeah. Well, let's say for this instance, you charge in, you... Are you still doing your drunken master boxing? Absolutely. I, there's a, a faint... You reach behind your back, you pull out a beer, you skull it, smash it on the ground. Then he raises his arms up in confusion going, Where the fuck did you get a beer? And then you haymaker him in the face, knocking him out immediately. (laughs) Everyone's quiet for a bit. And then... (laughs) They all start screaming, Combo breaker! Combo breaker! I love you, combo breaker! Um, you're welcome, everyone. Please. No problems, Bray. Carry on. So, after this fight night, after this night fight, after this fight night, after this night of fighting in the fight night ring in Lower Etika, you're walking away 
a few people have asked to um, take a picture and give an autograph. Um, you are walking the streets by yourself. You've won five fights in a row tonight and only lost one halfway through when you were um, you weren't lubricated enough. You hadn't had mm. you hadn't had enough drinks, we'll say. Either that or you're trying to um, not get a perfect score. You choose. You're walking down the dark streets of Lower Etika into Dark Haven. You jog the entire way home. It's a part of your regime, your regime of fitness, your fitness regime where you put your hand in the air, point it up to everyone and go, fitness! No, um, <clears throat> you're running home in the darkness through Dark Haven towards your house and you see this small, old antique shop that you have seen basically every time you've run past here and can i get you to roll a perception check for me yes you may oh actually with advantage on this one because of something i will reveal in a second uh oh i rolled a 19 both times 23 you notice three figures run up the side wall in the alleyway of this antique place hopping off one side of the wall to the other up, up, up and into this small vent without making a single sound and you know those movements perfectly you've practiced them a hundred times as a child in the monastery you have just seen three members the Brotherhood of the Shadow enter this small antique shop. I'm like, what do you do? This is my time to shine. Because I can stealth my way directly out the front of the antique shop, knowing that they're going to work their way down through and come out the front door like nothing's awry and poise myself in waiting. So you're going to wait out the front? I'm going to stealth up to the front and gently let myself inside and um, wait. So, uh, just a quick question. Are you wearing your black turtleneck right now? Or are you still in your fight gear? Ah, uh, fight gear. Okay. But I'm just so that good. Sh- I'm riding high on the adrenaline of a successful night. Out. I'm standing about an inch taller. You'll, you'll sort of peek through the tiny gap in the front, uh, sort of barricaded metal shutter windows of this antique shop and you see the movement of these three and they're dashing around in there and they're lifting things and they're opening things and they're looking through you wait you wait and it looks like they found what they're looking for because they climb up one of the bookshelves climb through the air vent that they entered in and you know that they're going to exit the same way that they came through through the front air vent Mm -hmm. you make your way around to the alleyway and can you roll a stealth check for me Uh, 15 can you roll for these guys I won't I won't be safe oof (laughs) I rolled nothing above a 7 7 was my highest roll Good. They all drop down into the alleyway. You have the element of surprise. So can I use my flurry of blows to exact precision movements straight into like the back of their heads to like knock them out? You certainly can. Roll your attacks sir, with advantage because they do not know you were there. Oof. Uh, 25. 25. Okay. How many targets can you hit? Um, I can make up to four attacks in a single move with flurry of blows. Awesome. Let's say for, um, because you rolled so incredibly high and for expediency, you hit all of them. Uh, Do you want to knock them unconscious? Yeah. Do you want to kill them? No, no. um, Do you want to leave one conscious? No, no, no. I presume that I know what they're there for. Um, I just want to to knock them out um, and stop the crime. All right, you jab one hand into the base of the skull of one. goes unconscious immediately. 
you spin kick, land your heel into the temple of another, knocking him unconscious. And then the third one who turns to look at you, but before he can even set eyes on you, you crack him in the side of the neck with a chop. He drops to the ground. And the third one drops a um, like quite a large, not large, but a medium size crate, like an old dusty crate. The top opens a little. You see inside amongst some fabrics that there are an old pair of boots in here. Hmm. I um, grab them out and examine them. What do I see? You basically see those, you know, those like ninja boots they've got uh, like two toes? Yep. Like got a little toe. You basically see those with um, some, it looks like wooden bands around them with these slight little elven um, carvings in it and now in New Etika elven writing looks very similar to sort of Asian characters Mm -hmm. they as you pick them up they feel incredibly light but sturdy and you may have seen very similar boots like this in the monastery and are worn by some of the most important, high-valued masters there. Mm. Yes, I think they um, enable great feats in terms of movement (laughs) and um, jumping. Yes. So, just for our listeners, they are boots of striding and springing. So, while you wear these boots, your walking speed becomes 30 feet, unless you are walking speed is higher and your speed isn't reduced if you are encumbered or wearing heavy armor in addition you can jump three times the normal distance though you can't jump farther than your remaining movement would allow yep as you sort of um look down over these brotherhood of the shadow operatives you tear away the parts of their mask see who's there you see Grey Fox, you see Alligator Tooth, and you see Red Wing. People that you have grown up with, that you have um, have known, they always a little. They had always been older than you, and they didn't treat you the best, but you know them. And you look through their wares, and you find two gifts that were given to them by your master. One, Red Wing is wearing. The Ring of the Ram. He um, did a very important mission for the Master, and this was his reward. You can take it if you wish. I take the ring. The um, Alligator Tooth, you look through her, wears... Oh, yeah. You know, besides besides some... <laughs> oh, no. Not Bob's and Virgin. Um, you, besides, you know, a few daggers here or there, you find... A necklace. There was also her gift for an assassination that she had done in New Etika. And you pull that from her and you take it. And it looks like a dragon's claw holding a black orb. Yes. And as you dash off into the night, you think of your friends. You tell me, does Little Moss feel it's time to come back? To his mercenary friends. Yeah. I th- nah, I- fuck him. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, I think we should split up, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> New character. <laughs> I I think seeing so many significant people from my past and dredging up all of those bad memories, I don't think I'm ready to face them yet. So I think I'm just I'm just going to keep living my life as I want to live it. If I want a pit fight, I will. If I want to hang out with a bunch of losers, I will. It's my decision. <gasps> um, this is an internal monologue, by the way. Um, and yeah. yeah, so I think it's time. It's time to go back and earn some cash. All right. You make your way back to your little apartment. You head inside, you see your red sports jacket hanging up, you see on your little shelf there you've got your gaunt sorry, your your braces of power, Mm. you see 
your turtleneck folded nicely on your bed and your kicks. And we will cut to the rest of the guys. Now you uh, gauge... You have, like, searched through some places to see who would sell the best gear, but all you get is constant advertisements, so you had to clean your browser history and call (laughs) Cortain uh, and basically be like, where can I buy shit? So we can do that now if you wish. We can do that conversation, or we can skip right to you guys out shopping. Let's just go shopping together. No, no, no. It takes me out. Take me out for a good time, baby. Um, All right, so you were in uh, this massive market section of um, Dark Haven. And it's called the Dark Market because here there are plenty of shops and stalls with weapons, guns, drugs, everything. This opens like once a month in various locations around the city. Sometimes you guys see police officers there, but usually they have been paid off to be there so that this doesn't seem like anything suspicious this is a place where mercs and gangsters and people in between go to buy their wares so first off just you can cut this or not i want some like nintendo e-shop like it's all dark but the music's like (laughs) (laughs) yes dude the wii sports theme (laughs) sorry that's copyright (laughs) Look, yes, we can, we can so meet up. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try and put that in there. <laughs> That's so good. All right. Uh, Spigs, are you, are you coming along or did Spigs not get invited? Spigs didn't get invited, but then somehow found out and rocked up at the same time. <laughs> Is it, no. Isn't this where, like, Spigs, like, tries to, uh, like... S- you know, sell his, like, wares for the <laughs> and He might get like, hey... Good idea. <laughs> hey, 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 guys. Oh, so you're saying oh, we hey. meet you as awkward, so we try to avoid you. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> hey, friends. Speed. Speed is wearing like a... Like, like a, like I, a, I, I have like a, a trench coat, stumpy, jacket. Stumpy hair. I stole my jacket. <laughs> hey, hey, I want to buy... want to buy some engine parts. Don't open that jacket. <laughs> do, not, do not open that jacket. I got pizza! <laughs> and this long ass tube. <laughs> oh. what, a, what, a, what, a, what a pet my new snake. Oh god. <laughs> no. With extra sausage. Oh. Oh no. I don't want the pet snake let's, anyway. Uh, let's, go, let's go shopping before. before Alright, so what are you, what are you looking for first? This jacket. Magic items, more weapons. Gage wants more weapons and more ways to like, try and protect himself. And all right. Yeah. Hey, do you want to buy a nice sword from me? Come on over. I'll show you some fucking cool swords, bro. Come on, come here. Okay, come here. Come here. Do you have anything else or just swords? I got swords and hammers, axe, anything you need. Uh, you can buy from me. Okay. I used to have like a a, a baton, you know, something that's small and I could just clip to my leg and then get out the last the last kind of second my leg or my hip. Do you have anything like that? I've got a couple of them here. Uh, this one, and he uh, pulls free this this sort of gunmetal grey baton. This one here has got special technology inside. It's it can um, detect magical energies and such. Or oh, I've got this one over here, and he goes digging through like a uh, a cupboard of sorts. Pulls out another one. This um this matte black with these purple sort of um, band lights um up the top of it. This one here can uh, fire energy bolts, if you will. It's uh, very good for uh, techno mages or hack or slicers, you know, that sort of thing. Very good. Gage looks at them. Um. Well, I've got plain ones if it's not really, uh, you know, if you don't have enough credits. 
Um, Gage looks, they're both interesting. Um, Gage, Gage can kind of do both, like, both those things already. Like, he has his, um, like, he can do magic detection. Um, and he does have gloves that do magic, like, that can shoot those bolts as well. Um, he, he gets, he gets the, the, what was it? The black and purple one? Yep. Uh, and he has a look at it, and he pulls it apart, and, or just, like, un unclips the baton, like, and then puts it away. Uh, does it look pretty sturdy and, and like, strong? Yeah, yeah, so it would do 1d6 damage as well. Okay. If, when you, if you hit with, a, like, melee attack. Uh, hey, Cortain. I think, I think I'll grab this, but... I've got these uh. gauntlets that kind of do the same thing. These, uh... These Defender Combat Gauntlets. Do you think you want these? Um, yeah, most certainly. I'll, uh, no, we I'll take them. But, uh... We'll s I might only need one of them. Uh, oh, look, we're here. Maybe we could maybe we could sort something out. You know? Maybe there's something here that could help you out. But once you want... Yeah, look, yeah. if there's... if It's going to be somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll find it. We'll find it here. Okay. So, um... We'll gauge... Says how how much for the baton? Well, this one because that's very special. One thousand credits. Mm. One thousand. That's a, that's a bit. It's a bit outside the price range. Persuasion check. Wait, wait, wait. No, yeah, no, yeah. Like, <laughs> do, <right>. you, <laughs> do you do you have anything else? Like, I was also looking for something a little bit um, like that I could throw. Maybe you could um, put something together. Like. No, but there is a guy down the road. He sells a lot of guns and knives. He specializes in them. I believe that he might have something for you. I like a lot of the hard-hitting stuff, you know? Okay. Well, maybe I'll just go down there, see if he has any hard-hitting stuff too. No problems. Come back if you want this, uh, this baton. <laughs> you can pay good money. Can I do persuasion on trying to say, like, I'm going, I'm leaving? Yeah, go. Right. 17. Look, look, look. Before you go, give me an offer for this. 700. little bit more I'll say 800 okay he slaps your hand he brings out this little circular device it's basically a pay a pay wave thing does it come um does it come with anything oh, does it come with anything that I can use to tie it to myself like a, like a holster ah yes you want leg oh. yeah le leg calf okay for look I'll throw it in for free, okay? Okay, sounds good. He goes back to the cabinet, pulls out a um, like a leg strap holster thing for okay. it, passes it to you, and he's like, 800 here! <laughs> and you see a little AR price saying 800 credits yep. floating above the little pad he's holding in his hand. Gage taps it. All right. Bling! And you have yourself a new baton of magic missiles. You guys make your way out into back into the market area. Um, he points you in the direction of the gentleman who sells guns and sharp things. Do you want to head over there? Yep. Spigs, where is he? Yeah. Where's uh where's Spigs? Spigs is like you see him in like another alleyway as he's like talking to this other shady character. Hey man, what are you? Uh, what do you, yeah, what are you selling? Oh, I'm, I'm selling, like, my shop wares, like, I've got all these cool, cool things, but, but I'm really, I'm really here, I heard, I heard you got, uh... Do you have any blackout? Some... Oh, no, I'm buying, I'm looking for some blackout, oh. man. <laughs> like, you, you want me to knock you out? No, 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 you know the good shit, blackout, man, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, <laughs> come on, blackout. I, I don't understand what, what you're talking about. You want me to punch you out? You want me to knock you out unconscious? I definitely don't want you to knock me out. That's all right. No, but but I, what I heard from the other guy, you know, over there, he uh, 
He said you got some pretty cool augments. Yeah, my cousin runs this place just over there. He, uh, he's got some quality shit. Oh, cool. Well, I'll go talk to your cousin then. Yeah, yeah. What's his, what, what's his name? If see, if you look straight through there, you're, you're looking for Gerard. Gerard, uh, okay. Yeah. I think, I've, I think I've seen him before. All right. Thanks, mate. No problem. Hey, if you find someone with blackout, tell him. Tell him that Tiga is looking to buy. Well, whatever. Okay. See you later. See you, bye. Okay, bye. All right, you make your way over to the shop. Um, it looks pretty decent. Um, it's a little chop shop. All different little um, signs with different types of augments in there. And this uh, half-elf man sort of um, meets with the door and he's like, Hello, what would you be looking for? Hey, I heard, uh, you, are you Gerard? That is I. Hey, I'm Spigs. How's it going? Nice to meet you, Spigs. Welcome to my shop. I heard uh, you sell uh, augments. I definitely do. I sell them. We have a small chop shop out back, but if you want to take it to somewhere that you are more comfortable, that is fine with me. Uh, I'm used to Darkhaven. Grew up here. Rightio. What are you looking for? Spigs. Uh, well, you know, I've been in the merc business a bit, and uh, I keep, uh, you know, getting knocked down, taking lots of damage. Um, have you got like a? Are you saying you got knocked down and then you got up again? I thought they were never gonna no, keep me down. Never <laughs> keep me down. <laughs> Too easy. Oh. <laughs> And uh, this guy called Danny Boy keeps coming around. I don't know, it's all weird. He's got two hands to keep you down. But, uh... <laughs> Good. Oh, why? Why? <laughs> crying in the background. So, uh... I don't know if, like, you can set up some sort of, like, chew mechanism that I can kind of activate. Gives me, like, there's a rush of, like... Rush of, like, health. I think it's called, like... I heard it on the street called... Uh, augment regeneration. Um, oh, and then another one like to like just boost my overall like, just like max uh, max health. You know, like you know, I can't it takes so much takes some more damage. You know, I've got both of them here. I've got health augments and regeneration augments. I can install them. That's uh, not a problem. Just. Um, I've just got, I've got only three of these augments of health left and one augment of regeneration. Now, I spoke to a gentleman earlier on this week about getting it done. Uh, I will have to send him a message to say that there is another buyer wanting what he has asked for. So if you just bear with me, Spigs, please take a seat here while I message him, uh, and we shall see what happens. Cortain, you get a message. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I answer it. From Gerard, and it says, I've got a dwarf here wanting to buy the, uh, and, and have installed the augment of regeneration. Um... I've only got enough components for either one enhancement or one augment. Uh, I would say that you should come down here now to um, to bid. I tell Gage I need to go because there's some idiot dwarf who is trying to trying to take my merch. Oh, I know an idiot dwarf. I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you both rock up at this um, at Gerard's Chop Shop, and this is not like a. Um... Wait, is, Sp- is Spigs? Are you are you the dwarf who's trying to take my merch? What are you, what are you talking about? I ordered augments of regeneration and a hand. Dude, you, this is is this the, where you get hands? <laughs> this is the Dark Haven, like. Saturday farmers market, okay? It's you can't a... <laughs> just go and pre pre order 
augments. This is like on the day purchase. Well, Spigs, you can actually request them, but no, when no, there no, are no. multiple Gerard, people Gerard, interested Gerard, in the Gerard, same Gerard. item, that is when a bid begins. And so I would like to say to the both of you, bidding will start at 4,000. Hold on. Hold on. No, no. This is not how we sell at the farmer's market. We go down as an arm wrestle. You, you asshole. What? You want to you wanna arm wrestle my right arm? Is that what you want? You choose your arm. I mean, I've got like one arm as well and my other arm, but it doesn't really count. Looks like you're both armless. Why don't you guys get uh, your stumps out and rub them together? <laughs> <laughs> That'll sure get the listeners uh, juicy. Wh- whoever gets an erection loses. <laughs> let's, 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 let's do this then, then Spigs. <laughs> All right. So ro- strength check, roll. All right. Yep. Yeah. Um, Gerard's like, fine. I will bring the arm wrestling table I have prepared at all times here for you two to arm wrestle upon. And he pulls over this round table that has like little cushiony section in the middle. And he says, all right, boys, no funny business. Arms up in the middle. When when you say funny business, so like a metal cable snake that I can direct to like move his arm, tie around it, move it for me. Is that funny? That's funny. No uh, funny business. If, if, if a hero dice, is that funny business? <laughs> <laughs> you can use as many hero dice as you like, but you have to. How can you how can you arm wrestle um, with one arm and roll a dice with the other? <laughs> you, you stay out of this little it's moss. The sound of one hand clapping. You stay out of this. This is the best thing that's ever happened in this podcast. You losing a hand. That's great. <laughs> Dude, uh, okay, you you both have to tell me how many hero dice you're going to set aside to roll before you both roll and announce what you roll. So, we just got hero dice, right? Because we leveled up? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, how so many? We, sh- we have seven. Five plus half look, your level. Look, look, I think there should be some secret message that we send to yeah, the like think a so. secret bit off. Okay, do you guys... What you should, what you should both really do is... Next you time should... on... No, no, I'm going to send you a text, Luke. No, but yeah, you send send me a text of how many hero dice you want to use, and you, I want you both to video on like Facebook Messenger your roles. Oh, to me. mate! Oh, oh don't trust oh. us now. Just just because two brothers in competition can be some pretty shifty business. Two brothers. <laughs> two brothers. <laughs> One augment. I think we all know the old adage. Never trust a Craig. <laughs> that's true. Cheater yeah, so Peter was. Like that's long, true. Okay. Well established canon. Whoa, whoa. I'll be right back. I need. <laughs> that doesn't sound suspect <laughs> at all. He's bluffing. <laughs> Look, I'm just gonna take a video. Yeah, just take a video and then send on it my, on my on my phone. But how do we know he didn't take six videos and just send you the best one? Because <laughs> he's gonna send it right now. Okay. After he rolls. All right. Okay. Um, wait for a bit. Ben needs to send me how many hero dice he wants to use. If he rolls a one, said, he could just send you a I picture said, of I his penis. A text. Oh, text. Okay, cool. Sorry, I was checking Facebook. He just sends you a picture, and it's it's him flipping it's, you it's off. Plus, plus his strength <laughs> modifier, right? <laughs> just 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 for just for knowledge, Ben, what's your strength modifier? I don't think I need to tell you that, do I? <laughs> no. You could. No. You, no, could you do a perception check? <laughs> yeah, you perceive that I'm ripped as shit. It's like I'm taking drugs. Uh, it's, that was only on the one arm. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. Do it. You ready? Ready? Yep. Okay. I hope you're all shit. <laughs> Gold. <laughs> While this is happening, is Gage like getting the surgery? Just <laughs> just pops down 10k. Just goes gets it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I need to turn up my turn up. You ready? You ready? Ready? Yeah. Twenty six. Oh, someone sucks. <laughs> it's you. Thirty five. Oh. oh. He, ben sent me the video as well. How many dice did you roll, bitch? Not telling. <laughs> Never gonna find out. All right. So there's at first there's a little back and forth the hands, then Cortain smiles, and then slams Spig's hand down. 
so hard it cracks the table and the guy's like, oh, another table broken. Great. And Cortain, it's all yours. And for this for this BS of trying to trying to sell it to someone else, you're gonna give it to me for five hundred creds less than you said. I'll pay the full amount. Oh last ditch effort. Cortain, roll a persuasion. What happened to the farmer's market? <laughs> yeah, man, this is you you're going back on your word. I thought dwarves were honourable. It's the farmer's market. There are no rules. <laughs> You started with there being He just rules. burst Jackie AI. Snake. Like, he's all kinds of messed up. <laughs> yeah. He's got mad with power. What was your persuasion, Cortain? Oh, oh yeah. So I thought you meant, you meant Spigs. No, sorry. My no, persuasion it's... was 11. Hmm. Not 500, but I'll take 200 credits off for that That's display fine. of strength. How about that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Cool. All right, you pay the man. You now, do you get the enhancement or the um, augment? So, what what is the difference? The enhancement is just on like um, it'd be like on your on your hand somewhere, you, your <laughs> left hand somewhere, just like printed under the skin. Yeah. Um, and then you wear you wear like a ring to go with it, or the augment will actually be in your body. It would, would it be really difficult to get the 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 augment out? Yeah, like they'd have to cut your arm off or whatever. Okay. Um, look, I'll I'll get I'll get them as enhancements. I also want the um. I also was getting the uh, the health the uh, or the enhancement of health, and also he was getting me a. Uh, like a cybernetic hand to, to you know, put it on my stump. Yep. So, you sit down in the chair, they put a mask on you, um, he puts these goggles on and he's like, now you're going to be put in a VR lounge. You get to choose whatever you want. Video games, movies, pleasure experiences, probably not the latter, please. Not, uh... I don't want another mess in my shop. Oh. 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 You, you will get to focus on such things while I am implanting and enhancing and augmenting. So just sit back and relax. And he goes to work. Uh, so you get... I uh, have... Do a three. So you get an augment of health. Mm-hmm. Or enhancement of health, you get the enhancement of regen. What was the other one? The hand and the hand yes. that takes a while. So while that's getting done, and one of the other people, um, I'm guessing, you still get the augment of health, Spigs. Nah, Spigs. Spigs is gone, and I got one. Of, uh, hey, hey, it's the fuzz. <laughs> 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 no, 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 I wouldn't do that. Um, yeah, he'll get the uh, augment of uh, health. All right, you um you have you're having that implanted, and so, uh, Gage, you wander off and you find that uh, the weapons dealer. There is an elf gentleman there, plenty of guns, uh, and he says, "I just had my colleagues slash rivals come to me and say that a man was looking for." Some sort of, um, weapon of some sort. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Uh, Some sort of, did he mention throwing weapon? Is that what you asked for? Yeah, I was looking for something in a pinch. You know, something that doesn't, can be quite quiet and thrown. Mmm, I think I've got the perfect thing for you. Let us head over here to this display case that's right over here and he makes his way over past all of these tables and racks of guns um and daggers and knives to a display case and he says now these are pretty expensive they are from cos industries they are named lightning shurikens now they're 1000 credits per shuriken uh, but they have some quite valuable uh, features. Go. And have you read what they do? Sorry, sorry, Luke. Was it was it not 
Coscorp, and then, and short just C O for Corp. Yeah, Coscorp probably. Yep. I might. Yeah, yeah. So it. It's, so it looks it re- reads Costco. Yeah, Costco. <laughs> it does, but with a K K O W S. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the equivalent of the javelin of lightning. Yes. 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 I did. I did have a question on that. Does he have if he throws it and returns back to a javelin? Does he have to pick up the javelin to rearm himself? Or is it, is it used up once once thrown? The javelin's property can't be used again until next dawn. There you go. Now it's time to recharge. Um, uh, so he has basically <clears throat> one lightning shuriken and one lightning javelin. Oh, just, just one? Huh. <laughs> yes, these are prototype weapons. They're quite hard to get your hands on unless you know the right people or know the right people who steal from the right people i guess <laughs> so uh which do you know i cannot divulge that information unfortunately unless you're paying a decent sum of credits for said information no that's fine um i'll take i'll take a shirk i'll take the shuriken very well also i uh, we walk past a bunch of guns and stuff like that Yes. Um, so, so Gage says he, um, he takes out he takes out his unloaded pistol. Yep. And, and you've got the laser sight on there. Oh, does do I have a laser sight? Or, oh, yeah, yeah. The laser yep. sight doesn't really do anything, right? Uh, yeah, it allows you to like you get um, you take and tag enemies, and for a certain amount of time, people get advantage on the next hit on that target. Oh. So okay. I can give you that information, like after. All right. Oh, if you want, because right. you've you've got a laser sight that actually does shit in AR. Oh, okay. Sorry, I forgot that. All right. Um. Well, he says. Um. I suppose you can get armor piercing rounds for a pistol. Oh, you can. Cool. All right. Um. I'll get some armor piercing I'll, I'll also get some some more ammo for this some armor piercing rounds all right so where are they I'm just gonna find so pistols it's gonna cost you 10 credits per 100 rounds uh, and then you need to if I can find the right page again and in 50 or 200. And then you add, yeah. Do I get to pick? Can I choose either? Yeah, you can pick. Okay, I'll get the two. I'll get the plus two damage ones then. The two hundred credits. Okay, cool. You can get um, a maximum of two hundred round. Oh, sorry, one hundred rounds for the two hundred credits. So you, he only has a hundred round. A box of hundred rounds of these. Yep, I'll take a hundred rounds. Cool, and you can get a hundred rounds of the plus one damage as well if you want. No, it's good. Oh, it's gonna take a while to go through a hundred rounds. We might, yeah, that's true. We might go shopping again before Gage gets through all those. Sweet. Yep. Um, anything else? Um, he might take the AR dot site as well. Um, just so he can possibly swap them out if need be. Oh, no. So the laser sight goes on the bottom of the pistol. The um, AR dot site goes on the top. Oh, cool. All right. Then he'll take... Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. Use the... You can put what both if you hold, What if you hide it, hold it sideways like a gangster? Yeah. Like, and you put it all on the side. Have, then you have, might accidentally shoot Spigs. Have four lasers pointing off it, so no matter which <laughs> way he turns it, he can still shoot. <laughs> um, the Actually, he, he'll grab the infrared scope, actually. Because, infrared? Yeah, because the dark vision will be helpful. Like um, In the last mission, he didn't have dark vision, couldn't do as much. Yep, cool. Cool. Sweet. Um, anything else you want to buy? Mm, nope. Nope, that'll do. Very good. So after, um, you know, you walk, you walk around and stuff like that, uh, after it's a couple of hours and you go back, Spigs is done, but Cortain's is going to take still a little while to get his hand all up and running and stuff. He's sitting in there testing it out. Uh, Cortain, do you want to describe their hand? Uh, it is a... Yeah, when he said testing it out, I know what you thought, Trevor. 
Yeah, it was like stress balls and stuff. <laughs> Gotta start on that or you rip your dick off. Um, <laughs> you don't want to stress your balls. <laughs> so it's it's a mechanical, um, like, skeletal hand underneath. Um, like Terminator style. Yeah. Uh, and then it has a... Um, a, a relatively accurate artificial like synthesized skin on top so it's yep. it's kind of like it's not it's not um the best blend of his of you know of his of his skin tone but so you could tell that it's an artificial hand but it it looks and feel like it feels like real skin yep it just doesn't have the little hairs and stuff on his yeah hand and yeah. that sort of thing yeah cool it's got little plastic fingernails, though, to make it look that bit more realistic. Yeah. Sweet. Um, yeah. So he's slowly just trying to, to move his, his fingers. At first, he just tried to move his hand and all the fingers would move. Like, he could only, like, clench his hand. Um, that's all he's really mastered at the moment. But he can slightly, like, move individual fingers. But it's very difficult. All right. Um... Did you want to go out shopping for other things? Um, yes. Yes, I did. Um, the Spigs is already there. <laughs> did you want to go... Did you want to do your shopping first, Spigs? Because you would have done yours first. Yeah, I just, like, asked him while you're underneath to get into your mind and whatever items you wanted to purchase. Spigs bought it all out. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Spigs goes to Gerald, like, while he's, like, already finished most of uh, his, his work... On on uh, Cortain, and uh, hey, uh, Gerald, do you do you know? Uh, oh, I'll just call you Jerry. Jerry, do you know anyone uh, selling some you know big kind of uh, explosion devices like grenades, like you know EMP stuff? Why, yes, actually, if you just head back through the market there, you will find. A dwarf, you might actually know the guy. He, um, he sells nothing but explosives and tactical uh, throwables. Wait, He's a good friend of mine. Wait, so all dwarves know each other? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, but this guy makes some of the finest throwables I've ever seen. And since Spigs here is a tinker, I've seen his shop. They might have run in similar circles. I'm no racist, excuse me <laughs> very much. Yeah, look, I just need to calm down from all the racism here, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for the tip. What, what, was his, what was his name? His name? His name's Regdar. Regdar. Oh, typical... Typical dwarven name. Oh, it's like he's being racist now. <laughs> it's like the, it's like the, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry of the dwarf world. I don't uh, know anyway, uh, uh, you know, Richard. Yes. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, Spigs goes off to the dwarf shop. Hi, Spigston. Remember me? We worked in a factory together couple decades ago, if you remember. Not sure if you do. It's alright if you don't. Uh... Were you, were you the dwarf on the left or on the right of the conveyor belt? Uh... I can't remember, to be honest. <laughs> Usually I was tanked before I went in. Yeah, you're the drunk one. Yeah, I've cleaned yeah. up my act now. I only drink every second hour. Do, do you remember, you remember when you... You had so much you threw up on the conveyor belt and it went into, like, in the machine? Yes. I was spewing, I got fired. <laughs> oh, that's where you went. Oh, yeah. that makes sense now. I remember. Oh, good days. Good oh. days. <laughs> I actually started getting some more work done once you left. It was great. Oh, I guess oh. that's good to hear. <laughs> Uh, I heard uh, you're, you're selling some 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 good some good merch here. I certainly am. And he points towards a whole bunch of crates of different 
explosives and throwables. So you see frag grenades, flashbangs, smoke grenades, a couple EMP grenades, and some binding grenades. Oh, it says binding. I saw. I thought I said blinding. I'm like, what's 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 the difference between a flashbang? It just didn't make any sense. Oh, this here uh, dangles people. Yeah, yeah, I made one of those. They're pretty. They're pretty easy. Um, uh, how many? How many? I, oh, I was. Uh, hold on, I got my shopping list out here. Uh, hold on. No, can't get that now. Someone already bought that. <laughs> jerk. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking for. Well, it's not. I don't want. I want. I want blinding grenades. So that's not the blinding grenades. So how about how about those uh flash flash bings? I can give you five. Oh, you know what? I can part. I can part with about eight of them all up. Oh, uh, only one five. It's all good. Five. Five hundred grand. Uh, what, what about what about those EMP things? What what does it stand for? Uh, electromagnetic pulse grenade. Oh, yeah, whatever crazy. I've got about got in there. five of those too. Oh, perfect amount. I've got five here on my list. Done. Take five of the, five of those. A thousand credits. Oh, and just chuck in my into my shopping cart. Can you uh, chuck in uh, a couple? Uh, like, how about how about five uh, flash, flash, uh, no, flash bang, not flash bangs. Only got a flash. Uh, <laughs> the the normal explosive grenade things. Ooh, fraggies. Frags. Good. Oh, did, did you hear we did we hear we fragged like a mega bugbear? That was that you. Was great. No way. Yeah, all by myself. No way. Did you took him that? out? No yep. way. Don't Got his head right here. See? Speaks <laughs> for the mega bugbear's head. Really? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting, but fucking awesome. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. You can have. The frag grades, five of them on the house. Sweet. Can have them for a fraction of the cost. Oof. <laughs> Oof that blew my hair back. <laughs> that one? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. I'm sure... I, I was pretty sure I was going to have another arm wrestle there, but luckily no one else is buying all these grenades. Not yet. <laughs> Alright, uh, is there anything else yeah. that you want to buy? Yep. Uh, Gage wanders around the area uh, looking for anyone that sells healing stims. Cool. You see oh, this yes. um, this half orc. Hello. What what were you looking for? Slender half orc woman. I've got basic and medium, and I've got stim grenades too. Oh, and adrenaline, but not many of those. I've only got two left. It's been a busy day. Dibs! <laughs> I hear this voice out of nowhere. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I think I think the adrenaline would be pretty good. Actually, I'll take... I'll take uh, both both the adrenalines, uh, like some stim. Like, we, we, we get taken down a lot, you know? Being a, being a mercenary is a tough gig. So I think I'll take also um, stim grenades and how many how many mediums and how many stim grenades you got? Stim stim grenades I've got two, and medium stims I've got that is three and four basic. Look, you know what? Could you do a discount for me? I'll take the lot. Yes. Spigs rocks up with like a hover trolley, <laughs> like, and he's like, comes in and he's like, "Hey, Gage, chuck him, chuck him all in here." Gage puts them in his coat. <laughs> it's oh, I put the coat in here then. He's wearing it, and he's like, 2,500 credits for all of it." Sounds good. Look, I've done enough haggling for one day. Oh, wait, wait, wait! I got. Do you want to go? Just because you you're do. buying my entire stock out, and I just want to go. Home now. It's been a busy day, and uh, I want to get some sleep. You couldn't use this uh, seniors card, could you? Spigs, Spigs, do you want to go Harvey's? Do you, is that would that make it easier? Look, look, you can pay for them. I'll, I'll take half of them. That's how it works, right? 
That's not how it works. They're probably gonna get used on you, most likely. Alright. I'll, I'll pay for them. And take them. All of them. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, good one. And speaks like claps his hand on the back of Gage. Like, is it possible to just reinforce my leather jacket to one? Yes. Like, get some netting or, like, some sort of, like, spray on. No, they all, um, they put some new lining in it. Yep. Some sort of ballistic lining. Awesome. I'll tell you the cost of, cost of that. Uh... Ben, do you remember how much it was to enhance the... Enhance the, the what, the armor? Yeah. Um, 1,200, you, you said. Yes, so, um, oh no, so, it's 500 to upgrade to a plus one, uh, but if you want to do, put like the resistance, the armor of resistance on it, they basically build a new armor for you, or sell you a new armor, which will be, um, the cost of the armor plus 1200 credits. And is that plus one to the armor as well? Like it's plus one armor of such and such? No, that'll cost you more again. All the, the things. Um, all the things. So you want a plus one and a resistance. What? Re okay. I'm going to do everyone's armor if they want to do that now. Yep. Fire. Okay. So Gage wants plus one and fire res. Cool. On on what? His, his, Just his leather jacket. Okay. That'll basically cost you 1800 because you're... Um, mm -hmm. Your jacket, you know, is not an armor, basically. Yep, cool. And what does Cortain want in his armor? I will keep the sh so I'll keep the shield, so I won't spend money on a shield. I'll get the plus one fire resist um, tactical armored unit armor. Cool. And just quickly, I will go to. So this is the exoskeleton. Uh, yes, the 19 base armor. Okay. <laughs> the You see this thing, and it basically looks like the image that's there. Yeah. So it's this massively heavy armored unit. You, like, um... You pre basically press a button, and the, a big back piece... Um, sorry, a big front piece opens up, and then you sort of um, step inside of it, and it closes over the front of you. It's going to cost you how much? 5,700. Yep, that's all right. I, I got that saved up. Spigs, do you want anything, any armor before we finish shopping? Um, I didn't actually have a chance to look at the armors. All right, Spigs uh, can buy some another time if he wishes. Cool. Was there other stuff I could buy? Because I was in the surgery shop. Oh, yes. Sorry, you were too. All right. Um, yeah, cool. I'll cut that uh, out. <laughs> what, what else did you want to buy? So, I would like to buy from the... Uh, uh, from the gun shop. I'd like to buy... Um, like to buy a thousand LMG rounds, because I've run out of those. Yep. Very start. I would also like to go buy some grenades... So, six no, frag... No, there's all five more left. There's five more? I will buy five frag grenades. Yep. Um, two of the flashbangs. I believe they're all gone. They're all gone. Oh, dang it. Okay, that's right. Um, what grenades has he got left besides those frag grenades? You know what? He says, I've got a lucky two more sitting here. Oh, Keep two... Just in case we need to get out of the market quick, if you know what I mean. Huh. Yes. He, so. He'll sell you two. He's got plenty of uh, binding grenades and smoke grenades left. I will buy two smoke grenades. Yep. And I'm also looking for a, uh, a very particular item that I was hoping to have connected to this, uh, to this armor, if I'm allowed to. And that was... A propulsion system, which... Ah, you go and find a, um, a human guy, a human dude man. Yep, a human dude He, man. um, he's like, oh, yes, uh, you best talk, you best talk to my sister. She's, um, 
She's been building something, and I think it's exactly what you might be looking for. Yeah, I've got these. She puts them down in front of you. Look, I can probably take them off the boots. It's going to take a couple days, and I'll probably be able to fix them to your uh, armor unit there. You won't be able to remove them um, without, you know, somebody who's good around tools. Um, but yeah, I can have them done in a couple of days if you like. Sure. How how much? To buy the the boots as they are was going to cost four hundred, but I'd say another five for me to pull these apart and attach them to your armor there. Okay. Okay. Are you sure? Would you take 400 extra credits rather than 5? <sighs> if you roll a good persuasion check. Um, no, 5. You rolled a 5? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, it's going to cost quite a bit to uh, pull these apart. Okay, five, 500 extra it is. Alright, so you're looking for boost, the boost treads, I'm guessing. Yes, the boost tread. Alright. Cool. She'll have them done in a few days. Was there anything else? No. Um, no, 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 that's all I wanted. Cool. And once again, you were all walking out of the market. Um, you know, are you going your separate ways? Are you leaving as a group? We can go back to the to go have a drink as as the credits roll. Yeah, cool. Mm. You guys all. Um, Spigs packs up all of his stuff. Cortain puts all of his new gear in the, um, you know, the back of his jeep. Gage gets in his car with uh, his brand new, or his, his new lined jacket, and you all head back to the Crooked Candle. You enter. Budge slides beers down the uh, down the bars. You enter and you grab them as you walk down the stairs. You're just chatting and laughing about how Cortain beat Spigs in the arm wrestle. And as the lights come on in the crooked candle, you're stepping down into the room. You see a familiar figure sitting on the couch, watching cartoons. He turns, looks over his shoulder. It's Little Moss, and he says, My boys! Who are you? Well, well, well. Shopping, eh? Sounds like fun. I might go and get myself a pastizzi. I think that's what they're called. The triangle hats that pirates wear. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Crux, the interdimensional gaming bard, and I'll be seeing you next time, traveler. Hey guys, just want to give a dark shout out to an awesome synthwave retrowave artist named Matt Damon. He allowed us the use of two of his tracks, Sonic Boom and Blue Steel Magnum. Now you heard Sonic Boom at 26 minutes and at 31 minutes 10 seconds you heard Blue Steel Magnum. Now if you liked the sound of his music you can check it out on SoundCloud. That is Matt Damon. It's spelt M-A-T-T-D-A-E-M-O-N. And you can also find him on Facebook. Follow him there as well. At Matt Damon 666. That's M-A-T-D-A-E-M-O-N. Number six, number six, number six. So yeah, go and check out Matt Damon's other music on his SoundCloud. He's got a good couple of tracks up there, so have a good listen to some good fucking music. You can also find links to it on his Facebook if you prefer to use that. Matt Damon, you're a badass. Thank you so much. Sonic Boom is such a fucking awesome song, obviously, and so is Blue Steel Magnum. Now, listeners... Keep an ear and an eye out for Matt Damon's EP or album coming soon. To our listeners, thanks for downloading. Thanks for being listeners. Thanks for putting up with my um, putting up with my my voice and my my nose and my grossness at the moment. I'm a little ill, but we'll get through it all together. Peter. Peter. Oh, I was looking at the top of the room sheet. Come on, you knob. You know what else is ill? 
Us. Luke's last name, but anyway, <laughs> you should totally jump on our website and check out all the fun stuff we have there when we're posting up new episodes, other crazy future techs, you know, whatever else seems cyber fun at www.beyondthedice.com. What's also pretty great is our Instagram. It's mostly done by Luke, but he does some great RPG and nerd geek pictures <laughs> And all bits and pieces all, all over there. If only he could spell my name. <laughs> I love. I love if it was like Greg or Drag or. Whatever it was. All right, and where where is that Instagram at? at Beyond the dice. <laughs> we also have a Facebook page where you sh- where you can get all the news, and it's over there at facebook.com forward slash bdt btd pod. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah. If you have some time to give us a review, wherever you download our podcasts, that would us reach more people and grow our <laughs> listener base. <laughs> that would help us um, to have more people. <laughs> and more people are good because then we can quit our jobs and do this all the time. Woo, teleprompters. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, guys, it would be awesome if you could give us a review or just even jump on Facebook and let us know what you think. Um, We'll be there to hug you on the other side. Internet hug, not a real hug, because that's invasion of personal space. Unless you want it, then that's cool. Anyway, good night, my friend. Without my permission. See you. And bye. Bye now. Bye. All right, Uh, do it. You ready, ready? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, do it. You ready? Ready? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, do it. You ready? Ready? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, do it. You ready? Ready? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, do it. You ready? Ready? Yep. Okay. Yeah.